Welcome back to John's Films, where today we have an RTX 4090 on the test bench for DaVinci Resolve 18 Studio. It's going to be tested against an RTX 3090, 3080, and a GTX 1070. I really have to say thank you to the patrons at Buy Me A Coffee who have contributed to this over the years. Our test bench today is going to include some CPU decoded footage here in the front due to its 422 chroma subsampling. You see the Sony A1's 8K 10-bit footage I shot at Chins Lake in Colorado. This footage is unable to be decoded by the NVIDIA NVENC encoders even on the RTX 4090 due to that 422 chroma subsampling. Now, as we get through this testing, you'll start to notice, hey, there's not much of a difference between the RTX 3080, 1070, and 4090. Like, what's going on? All of them are stopping and starting and generally keeping up with each other as you watch the water move. In fact, you may notice the mushrooms got hit by the 3080, 3090 first. That's because basically all the hard work was being done by the CPU, and it's the same 5950X CPU. So, with that said, we're going to start to see some differences in the smoothness of the footage based on the GPU. We will not, however, see one significantly fall behind because Resolve is playing keep up. And as it can, it'll stop and block frames so that it can catch up to where it should be. We will, however, still see some discrepancy, especially as you start to compare the GTX 1070 to these faster cards. Now, both the RTX 3090 and 4090 benefit from a larger VRAM, video RAM buffer. They have 24 gigabytes, while the RTX 3080 has 10 and the GTX 1070 has eight. In my testing, I've found when a timeline is loaded, much of that is put into VRAM, and the more VRAM you have, it's a massive benefit over less. Here you can see the H.265 8K 10-bit I shot on the Nikon Z9 is generally playing back smoothly. And that's because it's supported by the hardware encoder decoder. As we see here, you can notice that the decoder is active in, in this case, the RTX 3080's decode, but it works across all four of these cards. And that's why they're all keeping up. Studio has unlocked the use of that NVENC chip for us. And that's why Studio is often the best upgrade you can make for DaVinci Resolve. Better than a new GPU, better than a new CPU in a lot of cases. Now you'll notice as we fade into a color graded version of the H.265, we're gonna start to pick up a little bit of a difference, but not much. This is still not painful for any of these cards. Jumping ahead to a string of 8K in raw footage from a Nikon Z9 we'll see that there's, again, not that much difference. In fact, the GPUs, while doing some coloring and doing the decoding, are not actually working that hard. The difference comes in our next set of tests, which is the same clips, but with noise reduction applied. This is one of the most GPU-intensive tasks that you can do. In our case here with the 422 footage, the CPU is still doing the decoding, the GPU does the color and the GPU does the noise reduction. We will start to see in the bottom left, the GTX 1070 is freezing up a lot more than the others, though the others, due to the 422 chroma subsampling, are still stuck a bit. It's the same story with the mushrooms, but if we jump to the Z9 8K 10-bit footage, we will start to see a significant difference in the way that these are rendered and managed due to noise reduction. In fact, I dare say, despite the 8K H.265 10-bit footage, the RTX 4090 is smooth. This is amazing because even the RTX 3090 has some hitches in playback, while as you notice my arms talking, in the RTX 4090 top right, smooth and continuous, despite the heavy noise reduction color grade. Here we are again with Pretty Girl Lexi on the deck. I want you to pay attention as the color grade comes through. Notice the GTX 1070 still has yet to apply the color grade because it's still crunching on that noise reduction. I do have a heavier grade on this footage and we can see that that is affecting the Nikon Z9's 8K 10-bit footage. Despite this being the same codec as what I had in the interview footage you saw, unfortunately with this extra color grade on it, even the 4090 is not keeping up in real time. Next, I've got some fishing footage from Colorado with an A7S III shooting 4K 10-bit H.265 and 420 chroma subsampling. The reason this is important, the 420 is treated in the NVENC chip and allows the decode to happen in hardware, which is optimized specifically for that use case. And you see a much smoother flow even with the GTX 1070. 
This is an example of where if you're not using many of the GPU intensive processing effects, your GTX 1070 can hold its own in studio because of that NVENC chip. Now we're using some DJI drone footage from a Mavic 2 Pro and some effects. This fusion effects is where you're going to start to see a discrepancy between not only the 1070 and the other three cards, but you'll start to see the 4090 and the 3090 pull ahead just a tad. You can see on a compute layer, all of them are having to do quite a bit of work. And as we get into the particle systems, we've got embers coming up from the bottom and leaves coming in from the right. You're not getting perfectly smooth results in either. As I look at this, I'm thankful for the extra VRAM that's in the 3090 and 4090, but in overall performance, I'd say the bang for the buck with the 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the RTX 3090 is a steal all the way down $800 to $900 right now compared to a $1,700 plus 4090 if you can get your hands on it. Let me know if you have any questions or specific footage you would like me to test here. I intend to do one with DaVinci Resolve Free Edition in which I believe we will see there's almost no difference. Thanks for watching and have a great day.